Okay, I had some students that had problems uh, calculating part B of problem 8.1 and also it's very similar to problem 8 2 and 8 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right into this because I'm going to try and do this whole problem in less, less than 15 minutes. And I'm going to show you a couple alternate ways to solve it. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to put given probability and rate. We have 0.2. 0 0.7, 0 0.1, and the payoff is 19%, 9%, and 4%. Okay, so I have this discrete probability distribution, and there's a 20% chance I'm going to get a return of 19%, a 70% chance I'm going to get 9%, and a 10% chance I'm going to get a 4% return on the security that I have. The probabilities, of course, they all add up to 1. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to find the expected return. Okay, so that, I'm going to say that's a, uh, we'll just say call it R hat. Now you guys know sometimes I put a carrot on top of there, but uh, we'll just do it as a shortcut version today. And then B, they want to know the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation is a Greek symbol sigma, which looks kind of like, uh, it's like shaped like a lazy six or lazy nine, I guess. But we'll just type in uh, standard deviation today instead of trying to type. There's a way to put the Greek symbol in there, but we won't do that today. And then C, they want to know the coefficient of variation, what that is. Okay, so for a solution, uh, R hat, uh, if you look in your book, there's a formula 8-1. And it says the expected rate of return. There's a little hat that I'm talking about for R hat. So um, R hat, well, it's equal to the probability times the return. So this times this. And then that says plus this times this plus this times this. So don't do this, but I'm just going to show you it would be equal to, I'm going to show you a shortcut in a second. It would be this times this plus this times this plus this times this. All right? And it's going to give you an answer of 10.5%. Okay? But that's a shortcut way to do it. What I could do is I could use a formula called sum product. Okay? And sum product, you just go equal sum. And then it asks for the first array. Actually, it takes the product first and then it sums it. I should say, I think it's just a product sum, right? They call it sum product. So, so it takes, so I want the first array, so I want to take all these and then I hit a comma and then it wants the second array and I want to take all those times all those and then I want to add them together and I still get the same answer, 10.5%. So, that sum product is very easy to use, okay? So, um, so That's how you do that one. Okay. Um, for part B, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate what they did in the book. So let me copy this down here so it makes it a little bit easier. So for part B, they use this equation. They use a standard, calculate the standard deviation. And this is when you have a discrete probability distribution. This is how you would calculate it. And the first thing they do is they take r minus r hat. So I'm going to go r minus r hat, right? And that's simply equal to each one of these minus what we just calculated here, r hat. Okay. Now we got to think about this because I'm going to copy this formula down, and I want this to be relative, but I want this to be absolute because I don't want this to move down. I want this window to be pointing here on the next formula and here on the next one. I want it to stick. So I'm going to hit F4, and that puts dollar signs in front of here automatically. You could also type the dollar signs. It does the same thing. And there's R minus R hat. The next thing I want to do is I want to square it, because this is R minus R hat. The next thing it does, it squares it. Okay? So I'm going to let me label the column, the, the column heading. It's uh, R minus R hat, and then it's squared. And to square it, I would just say equals this 
times this. That's the same thing as squaring. Multi times, multiply it times itself twice. Or usually what I do, I just go carrot 2 and do the same thing. Okay? And now, I, this I'm not going to leave it as percent because it's actually, the units are actually percent squared because I just squared that number. So we'll just leave it as decimal. Now the next thing we do is you're going to take it times the probability. So I'm going to copy this all over. That thinks I'm cubing it because I went r hat, r hat squared. The next one must be cubed. Excel tries to think ahead, but sometimes that's not what you want. So I'm going to change that to squared, and then times the probability. So that's what it says next, take it times the probability. And I'm going to go equals this times that. Oops. Equals this times that. So I'm taking r hat, r minus r hat squared times the probability. Now these. Do I need these to be absolute or relative? I want them, bo all, both of them to move down. So I don't have to hit F4 or anything here, right? And I copy that down. So now I've done everything. Now I have to sum. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to hit this little auto sum up here. And does auto sum. And it tells me, is this what you want to add together? Yes, it is. So I hit enter. And the very last thing i got to do is take the square root. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to type in the SQRT of this right here and enter. Okay? And um, so that's how you do those two. And now this is the answer. So let me highlight it and make it percent, take it out a couple places. And we'll copy this down here. Make that yellow. So that's the answer. Okay? Now there's a shortcut way to do this, so I'm going to put in an alternate solution. There's several sort of short, shortcut ways to do this, but I'm going to show you a couple. Um, I could do it all in one formula. What I could do is I could use some product. Remember how we use some product right here? Because if you look at this, it's all this squared times all this, and adding them together. And then after that, I take the square root. So I can use sum product. So I'm going to say equals sum product. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take the product of r minus r hat squared times the probability. So I want the sum product of this minus r hat. I need to square it, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to start a parenthesis. I'm going to hit the end key, E and D, and end the parentheses. And then what I want to do is I'm going to do the caret 2 to square it. And then I'm going to do a comma. So what's the next thing I want to multiply times? I want to multiply it times all these probabilities. Okay, that's the next thing here. Okay. And I'm going to close that. So now I'm taking all these and multiplying them, and then I'm summing them. And finally, I want to do the square root. So I'm going to go to the front again. I'm going to go SQRT and put a parenthesis here. I'm going to go to the end of the formula by hitting the end key, E and D, and then putting another parenthesis. Now we hit enter. It's going to be the same answer, right? So it's going to be the 4.5%. So we got the same answer. Okay. Now we can do it another way. And you guys don't necessarily need to know this. I'm just showing you. But you can do something called matrix notation. And I can go equals. Um, and I'm just going to type it in the way, the way it works. So I'm going to type this in again, but I'm not going to use some product. I'm just going to use matrix. So it's going to be these minus that. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the front of it and go to the back of it and put in parentheses. I want to square that, right? So I want to take this, each one of these minus that. And I want to square it. And then I have to take it times all of these. Okay, that's the next thing I did. Now I want to add them all together. So I'm going to type sum, put a parenthesis, go to the end, put a parenthesis. And then finally I need to take the square root. So I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to type SQRT, put a parenthesis, and go to the end, and put a parenthesis. Now this is where you got to be very careful. You just can't hit enter. Because this is matrix, this is it's a matrix notation, so it's using matrices. It's assuming this is since I highlighted all these and we're using matrix, 
when I do some product, it already kind of does that. But now we didn't use some products, and I got to tell it's, it's a matrix. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift, and I'm going to hit Enter, and you give me the answer. So if I form, format that print. Now, uh, so let me show you what that looks like. So this is using some product, and this is using matrix notation. You can see since I did Control Shift Enter, it automatically put these brackets to tell me that's matrix notation. Okay, um, you can't just type those matrices in. You got to type. You got to. You got to hold down Control Shift Enter after you type the formula, and then it does it. Okay, so for Part C, the coefficient of variation. Well, that formula is right here. Okay. And the coefficient of variation is really is just equal to this. The amount of risk, the standard deviation is the amount of risk, and you're divided by the expected return. And, and then this is not percent, so I'm gonna go up here and I go number, right? And that's the coefficient of variation. And that's it for that one. Hopefully it helped. Thank you.